Ladies and gentlemen, our next guest is, lo is a lovely and talented lady. You've seen her on Comedy Central. It's Liz Mealy. <laughs> You're right, it's fine. <laughs> I've, uh, I've lived in New York City now for 11 years, and I don't have a gay best friend. <laughs> that's weird, right? Like, I went to art school, that's where they come from. <laughs> and the problem is that I didn't have any gay friends, the problem is I had too many gay friends, and I think, as we all know, you can only have one, because they're exhausting. <laughs> So I was trying to narrow it down to the best gay guy. You know what I mean? Like the guy that would look into my eyes and know my shoe size, like they, <laughs> like they do in the movies. But nobody sits an adult New York City woman down and teaches you the truth about gay men, which is that they're just dudes. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> they're just dudes, like any other dude I've ever met. I'll give you an example. When I was like 19, 20 years old, I was at a party with my friend Ryan. I'm just getting shit-faced. Out of nowhere, Ryan grabs my boobs, starts shaking them, and laughing. <laughs> I was like, what the fuck, dude? Don't touch me. And he's like, whoa, calm down. I'm gay. <laughs> I was like, how's your gay make me not molested? <laughs> Right, like there's no rule like must have boner for me to feel uncomfortable. <laughs> Don't touch me, I've never had to tell a lesbian that. Cause they were raised right. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm trying to date. I, uh, I recently joined a free online dating website. I, uh, I joined OkCupid. I'm glad I joined OkCupid, I learned a lot about myself. Like I learned that I'm a girl. <laughs> I've never felt like a girly person, but now I know that I am because the sole reason I didn't want to join that website is because I still wanted the story. I think every woman in here wants the story of how you met your boyfriend or how you met your husband, and you want it to be a good one. But I'm a comic. I want my story to be epic. I want my story to be something like I was standing on the subway platform and I was texting, but I lost my balance and I dropped my phone in the tunnel. And then as a train was coming, this dude jumps in the tunnel, nearly gets hit by a train, jumps out, hands me my phone, and his name and number are already in it. <laughs> and his name would be Odyssey. I've been on exactly five OkCupid okay dates, so that means I've written five emails to my roommates titled, Please Seek Justice If Murdered. <laughs> For anybody that is trying to online date, I wanna give you some hope. I did meet a dude online. Uh, it didn't work out, so it's a weird way to give hope. Uh, but you have to understand, there's still people that don't use their credit card on the internet. I fucked a dude from the internet. I'm like a success story and a survivor. <laughs> I want a t-shirt. I think he was my boyfriend. He always texted me back. <laughs> if you want to know anything about the modern woman, if you text me back before my friends do, you are my boyfriend. <laughs> That's how that shit works now. But it's because of him I found the one benefit of online dating, which is he was the hottest man I have ever dated in the history of my life. So everybody I've ever dated was over here, and he was over here with like kittens and rainbows and other things I enjoy Instagramming. <laughs> and it's strange, because I think most people know that when you meet somebody in person, you connect. And it's through that connection that you build an attraction. And it's through that method of dating that I have accidentally dated a lot of ugly men. <laughs> But you can't do that online. There's nothing to connect with. If you've never online dated, this is exactly what happens. You go through a really bad breakup and you're single for like a year. And you get really sad and your friends are like, oh my God, you're so sad. Maybe you should do that over there with the other sad people. So you make new friends and they introduce you to online dating even though it's never worked out for them. So you go home, you make a profile, you cry and you judge the shit out of people. 
You do, it's really easy. You go, oh, those are your eyebrows? I'm not doing that. I take care of my face, maybe you should take care of yours. Oh, you mountain climb, that looks really fun. I'm not doing that. I don't have the energy or the time or the, I'm not gonna fuck you and then mountain climb. That's a really long day. You're just judging faces and hobbies, and you're really just narrowing it down to what's most important, which is, do I want you to be inside me? <laughs> you send all those dudes a message, and you just hope that one comes back with a shitty childhood. Because <laughs> that's where personality comes from. <laughs> why I've been so charming. <laughs> I'll leave you with a story. I am, uh, I am the oldest, I'm the second oldest of five kids, and I'm really close with all my siblings, but I'm especially close with my little brother, Sam. My little brother, Sam, is about 10 years younger than me. And the thing about Sam is he's only known me as a comedian. So I've kind of, it kind of has shaped my life being a comedian. I'm very honest. I've never told him a lie. I just kind of tell him as it is. And I always thought that was really cool about our relationship until pretty recently when I found out that we don't have boundaries. And those are important. <laughs> this is how I found out. So uh, a couple months ago, my little sister and my little brother were living together at the time. And I walked in on one of the weirder conversations for an older sister to walk in on. I walked in on my little brother telling my little sister like those funny sexual position jokes. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? They always have a title, like the rusty trombone. It's always something fucked up. Like you come in her eye and it's called the pirate. <laughs> Shit like that. So this is the one I walked in on. It's a dude fucking a girl from the back, but that dude leaves. Another dude starts fucking her, but the first guy goes in front of a window, waves to her, and it's called the poltergeist. <laughs> and he's laughing, and he's laughing, and he's like, isn't that funny? You're a comedian, isn't that funny? That's so funny, isn't that funny? And I was like, no. dominated field for 12 years. I've heard every fucked up thing you can do to a woman and it's always something that ruins her hair and I'm not okay with it anymore. <laughs> I really care about my hair. So I decided as someone who essentially travels the world and does spoken word that it's kind of my responsibility to spread feminist sexual positions. <laughs> free time, I came up with three. <laughs> Position number one is a dude going down on a woman. She squirts in his face. He learns to respect women. It's called the 19th Amendment. <laughs> All right, sa save your energy. I got two more. Position number two is a, dude, is a woman riding a dude. She gets him about 30% away from an orgasm, but she gets up and leaves. It's called the Equal Pay Act. <laughs> position number three is my favorite. It's just a woman masturbating in a kitchen. A dude walks in sad. It's called Make Your Own Dinner. <laughs> I'm Liz Mealy. Thank you so much. Thank you.